58 million years ago, the most dangerous snake to ever exist roamed the Earth. It was the apex predator of its time, terrorizing everything in sight. In one corner of the ring, we have the Titanoboa. And in the other corner of the ring, from 65 million years ago, another deadly predator lurks, the T-Rex. It was at the top of its food chain with no competitors in sight. These two beasts both reigned supreme when they were alive, but if these predators had lived in the same period, who might win a battle to the death? Which creature would have the most advantages? How might the Titanoboa's size factor into the fight? And would this battle be about brute strength? or strategy. This, this is, is Titanoboa, Titanoboa versus T-Rex. We welcome you to today's battleground for our two warriors, the watering hole. Since the Titanoboa was too large to hide in trees, it would often slither around in shallow water. And since this was a common hunting ground where predators could sneak up on unsuspecting prey, the T-Rex could be found here as well on the lookout for its next meal. Given this battleground, which competitor might have the home court advantage? Round 1! Let's learn a bit more about our fighters. Weighing in at 1100 kilograms, we have the Titanoboa. This is the largest snake ever at 15 meters long. Although it doesn't attack with a venomous bite, the T-Rex better watch out for its constricting abilities. The Titanoboa crushes opponents with its long body, exerting over 27,000 kilopascals of pressure. Next, we have the king of the dinosaurs, the T-Rex. It's significantly heavier than the Titanoboa, weighing in at 14,000 kilograms. Its stubby arms are virtually useless in combat, but don't count the T-Rex out just yet. Its massive jaw contains serrated teeth that can slice up virtually anything. If the Titanoboa gets caught in the T-Rex's bite, this fight will be over pretty quickly. Now that we know a little bit more about our opponents, who do you think will win? Round 2. Fight! fight. We meet our opponents at the local watering hole. The T-Rex is on the hunt for its next meal and looks to be pretty hungry. There's no other prey nearby, so it looks like the T-Rex is going to drink some water. It's pretty early for a break, don't you think? And on the other side of the watering hole, the Titanoboa is lurking about. And now it seems to have spotted the unsuspecting T-Rex from afar. As the T-Rex continues to drink some more water and wait for its next meal, the Titanoboa is now making its way to the other side of the battleground. It looks like it's slithering under the water, waiting for the perfect time to strike. The T-Rex is now done drinking and starting to walk away, and oh, the Titanoboa strikes from behind! The T-Rex is disoriented and stunned. It looks like the Titanoboa is using this opening to wrap itself around the body of the T-Rex. The T-Rex is doing its best to escape, but this extra weight the Titanoboa is putting on the dinosaur is giving it no chance. Oh man, this is just too ugly to watch. The T-Rex is completely outmatched at this point. The Titanoboa is continuing to constrict its body and oh, there goes the T-Rex toppling over now. Yes, this is pretty much a done deal here, folks. The Titanoboa is now issuing the final blow further constricting and suffocating the T-Rex to death. That'll be a nice meal for the Titanoboa, but I'm gonna call it there. One, two, three! And your winner is the Titanoboa! Now, let's take a look at the replay. Round three. If the T-Rex had been able to strike first, the battle would have played out very differently, but looking at the footage, we can see here that the Titanoboa's patience is what really set it apart in combat. The snake was known for its ability to plan, carry out sneak attacks on its prey, and that method was on full display in this match. 
Research also suggests that the T-Rex had weak, beady eyes, and it really had no chance of spotting the Titanoboa from afar, which made it so easy to sneak up on. And once the Titanoboa got hold of the T-Rex, its short arms served no favors. Due to their size and impracticality, the T-Rex wasn't able to use its strength to tear off the Titanoboa, allowing it to constrict the dinosaur, eventually suffocating it. So, although the T-Rex was, in theory, stronger, the Titanoboa's strategy allowed it to become the ultimate victor of this battle. Did you know that there's been a war going on for thousands of years right under our nose? It involves one of the deadliest insects in the world, the murder hornet, and the humble honeybee. This rivalry has been happening all around the world, but which creature is typically the winner in this battle? On this episode, we're going to find out. Tonight, it's Murder Hornets versus Bees. The Murder Hornet is coming into this fight as one of the biggest insects ever at 50 millimeters long. The venom from its stinger can kill up to 10 mice. And a colony of murder hornets? Well, that could take down a human. Its combatant isn't just any regular bee. In this fight, we'll have the Japanese honeybee. Its biggest asset in battle is its strength in numbers and its sense of smell. A single bee has 170 odorant receptors allowing it to communicate and identify any potential attackers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this fight won't take a matter of minutes to complete, but instead will take place over several weeks. That's because our murder hornets are taking on an entire bee colony. A single murder hornet is starting this fight by approaching the bee's nest. It smells honey and needs a ton of food to survive, it's hoping to take out a bee who's wandering outside of the hive, and it looks like it successfully does. The murder hornet snatches and takes out the bee with its mandibles. It's going to bring its corpse back to the nest to eat. And now that the murder hornet knows there's a colony nearby, it's going to tell the other worker hornets where they should hunt. The murder hornets are now in the attack pattern that's known as the slaughter phase. Here, they'll bring several murder hornets to focus on a single hive that has been marked with a chemical secreted from one of the workers. Now, usually when this happens, the murder hornets would come to the nest and wipe it completely clean. They would be in kill mode, stalking the nest and taking out the honeybees one by one. Just a few dozen murder hornets can take out nearly 50,000 of them. But since we're dealing with the Japanese honeybee, this fight will play out very differently. Honeybees have evolved alongside the murder hornet, and because of that, they've gotten pretty good at defending themselves. As the murder hornets approach the nest, expecting to have an easy feast, Something strange is happening. There are no longer any bees outside of the nest. The bees smell danger and they've decided to retreat. The murder hornets are hesitant at first, but one approaches the nest and looks to be going inside. The bees aren't attacking at all, in fact, they're hardly moving. The murder hornet is seeing this as a good thing and attacks one of the honeybees, but that was the exact opportunity the bees were looking for. Now that the murder hornet is in their territory, hundreds of bees swarm their opponent. They're creating what's known as a thermal ball. Instead of attacking with their stingers, they're working as a team to create heat. And it turns out that's the murder hornet's greatest weakness. The bees thermal ball is 47 degrees. The murder hornet is unable to withstand the heat. But this wasn't without sacrifice as nearly 25% of the bees in the colony also died. But it was well worth it as the bees 
have now killed all the murder hornets and will live to see another day. And your winner is... The Honeybee! Descended from dinosaurs, the Komodo dragon and the crocodile are some of the biggest, baddest, cold-blooded animals alive today. If they were to cross paths, it wouldn't be a friendly family get-together. Would the Komodo dragon live up to its mythic namesake? Or would the crocodile make a quick meal out of the Komodo dragon? Find out on this Royal Reptile Rumble. It's the Komodo Dragon versus the Crocodile. Tonight's contenders hail from very different parts of the world, so the chance of them going toe-to-toe -to -toe isn't very likely. But in the versus ring, anything goes. Let's take a closer look at these fighters. At almost three meters long and weighing in at about 90 kilograms, it's the Komodo Dragon! This contender is a unique animal. Of the 3,000 plus species of lizards alive today, the Komodo Dragon is the largest. He's truly one of a kind as Komodos only live on the five islands of Indonesia's Komodo Dragon National Park. They've also got a nickname around the ring as Grave Robbers. Komodo dragons are able to smell dead bodies as far as 10 kilometers away. Their heightened sensory power helps Komodo dragons find and dig up the recently deceased so they can feed on their rotting flesh. Now that's a seriously hardcore reputation. But is it enough to scare off our next fighter? He grows up to almost twice the length of his competition at almost six meters long and weighs over 900 kilograms. You know him, you love him, and hot off of last week's win, it's the Crocodile! Crocodiles have been around for thousands of years. They have 23 species now, but there were many more during the Cretaceous period. They're semi-aquatic and like to hunt in the water. Able to hold their breath underwater for an hour, these creatures really blend into their environment. With the Komodo dragon taking the land and the crocodile taking the water, let's see who's going to get this fight started. Round one, who makes the first move? With his heightened sense of smell, the Komodo dragon's fiery yellow forked tongue taste tests the air and senses any rotting flesh. The coast looks clear. Meanwhile, the crocodile has been hiding in plain sight since before this fight began. He's patient and sneaky, blending into his environment and looking like a floating log. Crocodiles have slow metabolisms and can go for months without food. So this contender won't have any trouble waiting for the right moment to strike. Whoa, he's a fast one. This crafty croc used his ability to wait for the perfect moment to attack. And by using that advantage, he takes the first round. Round two, strength and skills. The Komodo dragon instantly gnashes his teeth at the oncoming croc. His measly maximum bite force is only about 100 kilopascals. That's tanked by the crocodile's massive choppers, which can clamp down at up to 34,500 kilopascals. But the Komodo dragon has a secret weapon. While his bite lacks strength, he makes up for it in venom as they use their shark-like teeth to shred their victim's skins and muscles, the venom infects the wounds and causes the prey to bleed without stopping. This causes shock and kills the prey within a day. Yeesh. 
Although crocodiles are used to hunting venomous creatures like snakes, this adversary isn't some slithery lightweight. It's a big, bad Komodo dragon. He's biting into the crocodile, injecting his venom. Round two goes to the Komodo dragon, but he's going to have to work hard to make it out of this fight on top. This fight isn't over yet, and even if the dragon doesn't survive it, his venom could take a toll on the crocodile within the next day, making the outcome of this fight a post-mortem win for the Komodo dragon. Let's see how our fearsome fighters fare in round three. Round three, speed. Komodo dragons have a pretty fast running speed of over 21 kilometers per hour meaning this fighter could outrun the crocodile's top speed of just under 18 kilometers per hour. But the crocodile has the home field advantage. In this watery arena, the croc can swim at 32 kilometers per hour. The croc uses it to go in for the finish. Ouch! The Komodo dragon is down for the count! The winner of round three and the fight is the crocodile! He earned the title of World's Baddest Reptile. The croc's stealthy attack landed the first bite and its enormous brute force strength overpowered his opponent. It's a subaquatic smackdown between two ocean predators. Will the orca live up to his name of Killer Whale? Is the great white shark as fearsome as her reputation? Let's see who swims, smashes, and slashes to the top. It's Killer Whale versus Shark. While there's room in the ring for both predators, fights between great white sharks and orcas are becoming more common due to the continuing shortage of food. When survival is on the line, neither the toothy great white nor the clever killer whale will want to bow out without a fight. Do not free this willy. He's the odious orca. There's a reason why this species is called killer whale. They are some of the most aggressive and deadly animals on Earth. With brains and brawn, this is one formidable foe. Next up, this monster can sniff you out in the darkest of oceans. Give it up for the lightning fast great white shark. These sharks have an incredible ability to smell even trace amounts of blood in the vast ocean. They're stealthy hunters that love snacking on prey ranging from fish to sea lions, but they do have one weakness, and if the orca exploits it, it could deliver a death sentence to these ancient predators. Will we see another sequel to Jaws tonight? Or will the black and white menace live up to its namesake? Stay tuned to find out. Round one, size. Smelling blood in the waters, the hungry great white has entered the area where a killer whale is currently eating his dinner. Weighing in at 2,200 kilograms and measuring seven meters long, this female shark is one of the larger great white specimens. She may be a little too confident about being able to muscle out the killer whale though. Weighing in at 5,600 kilograms and measuring nine meters long. Looks like the killer whale takes this round, fight fans. Round two, speed. Uh, realizing her mistake, the great white shark begins swimming away, reaching a speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Her pointed scales, which are more teeth-like than scale-like, decrease drag and stay stable at high speeds. If you want to get fancy, they're called dermal denticles. While the killer whale can't maintain his highest speed of 48 kilometers per hour for long, 
He's still gaining on the shark. Look out, folks! The whale is hurling his body through the water, preparing to impact the shark. Round three, feeding habits. There have been cases of killer whale versus shark action before. And we've got some bad news for our great white. In most cases, the killer whales win. Apparently, these black and white monsters find shark livers quite a delicacy. It seems the killer whale has decided to have his cake and eat it too. Even if the shark were to turn around and face the whale, the only advantage she would have are her rows of teeth. They're sharp, but they may not cut it if the killer whale rams into her with his full force. What's this? The shark dives straight into the dark depths of the ocean. Unlike killer whales, which stay within one kilometer of the surface, great whites go slightly deeper, about 1.1 kilometers below the surface. It might not be much, but the great white is banking on the orca needing to go up for air. Oh, but it's too late! Piercing through the dark, using his superior eyesight and echolocation capabilities, the killer whale dashes in with a finishing blow. Swimming victorious is our maximal mammal, the killer whale! Tonight, old and new go tusk to tusk in a colossal battle of the ages, featuring some of the Earth's largest terrestrial animals. The elephant will face off against its distant cousin, the woolly mammoth. Who will win? The formidable furry ancestor? Or the big-eared newcomer? It's the woolly mammoth! versus the elephant. The woolly mammoth and the African elephant instantly recognize their towering opponent across the ring. Both monumental mammals are feeling especially testy today. Neither of them want to share their territory. The elephant uses his large leathery ears to make himself look larger. Swinging his head back and forth, the elephant charges at the woolly mammoth. Ooh, it looks like it's gonna hurt. Oh, you'd know those tusks anywhere. It's the king of the herbivores, the African elephant. People often underestimate the African elephant's ability to kill. But don't let his vegetarian diet deceive you. Elephants are dangerous creatures killing about 500 people each year. Standing four meters tall and weighing in at 6.3 tons, the African elephant uses its massive size and tusks to stomp, trample, and throw its opponents in battle. They are especially aggressive during the two months known as the must. The male elephant's testosterone levels surge by at least 60 times his normal level. This causes the temporal gland on his forehead to swell and causes pain, making him especially angry, aggressive, and erratic. Will his raging temper and gargantuan size be enough to conquer his now extinct cousin? Well, we'll have to watch to find out. The elephant stops just short of the mammoth. His charge was a bluff. The woolly mammoth is fuming. He starts swinging his tusks and trunk, getting ready to charge at his opponent. Like his rough-skinned opponent, the mammoth's swollen temporal gland causes pain that's putting him on edge. And the swelling makes him unable to think straight. Now, the woolly mammoth charges at the elephant. There's no faking it this time with our unstoppable, unforgiving, unrelenting woolly mammoth. Extinction has robbed us of seeing a living woolly mammoth, but these ancient creatures have only been extinct for a couple of thousand years. 
The family resemblance is clear between our two contenders, and their heights and weights are similar. But unlike the elephant, the woolly mammoth's skin is covered in long, thick fur that protects him from the elements and fights. At this point, it's anyone's guess as to which colossal creature will win. The two titans are running toward each other at their full speed of 65 kilometers per hour. It's safe to say the inevitable clashing of tusks and bodies will be fast and fatal. This epic showdown could end in a matter of seconds. If the elephant can avoid the woolly mammoth's long tusks, he could use his superior intelligence to attack the woolly mammoth from the side. This would allow his shorter tusks to pierce deeper, past the mammoth's protective fur and skin. But all the woolly mammoth needs to do is run head-on at the elephant, making sure his longer and deadlier tusks make contact with the elephant first. Oh, this is it, folks! With a deafening crash, these two beasts run into each other. Oh, the elephant is mortally wounded by the mammoth's long-reaching tusks. A good move for the mammoth, but he's not out of the woods yet. It's a mess out here as their tusks entangle the two creatures together. Neither combatant can escape the other creature's assaults. While his fur gives the woolly mammoth some protection, he gets badly gored by the furious elephant's thrashes. What's this? The throwdown has stopped, and the African elephant is down! Ooh, give it up for the prehistoric powerhouse! The winner is the woolly mammoth! Make no mistake, this was not an easy battle to win. Today's elephants and the ancient woolly mammoth share a lot in common. It's no wonder the battle between these two giants kept us on our toes. And physical attributes aren't all these two have in common. Today's elephants are facing extinction, just like their long-gone furry cousins. Due to poaching and habitat loss, we are losing the largest land creatures at an alarming rate. Even a fearsome animal that can take on a woolly mammoth could go extinct without our help. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't know they could do that. Lions and tigers are two of the biggest cats around. And today, these two predators are stepping into the ring to see who's the top dog. I mean cat. Will the tiger come out of the fight victorious? Or will the lion lay out the competition? It's a big cat battle royale on Tiger versus Lion. Tigers and lions descended from Proilurus lemonensis, the granddaddy of all cats. Though related, the ancient species of lions and tigers split off millions of years ago and they evolved separately. But this family affair will prove once and for all which of these big fighters deserves the title of baddest big cat. In this corner, striding around at 300 kilograms, it's the tiger! He's a stealthy and solitary hunter, often hiding for hours and waiting for the perfect moment to pounce on prey. Strong and fast, his intimidating roar is said to cause paralysis in those that hear him. The tiger is a powerful force to be reckoned with. Opposing the tiger, weighing in at 225 kilograms, is the lion! He's a strong leader and takes responsibility for his whole pride, but don't let this heartthrob's good looks fool you. The lion's mane serves as an extra layer of protection for his neck and spine. As the king of his domain, it's going to take quite a smackdown to defeat this beast. Let's see which fighter has what it takes to be the toughest big cat around. Round one, hunting styles. 
Lions like to see their prey before they attack it. Often, they'll run at their prey to scare it with a fake out before going in for the real attack. Then, they'll play around with their meal before finally killing and eating it. This tactic isn't going to work against our tiger. He lurks in the tall grass, camouflaged by his unique stripes, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. It's one and done for him. No games, only the hunt. Often, male lions don't join the hunt. They let the lionesses in the pride bring the food to them. As soon as the lion is alone and vulnerable, the tiger has the best opportunity to go in for the kill. With the element of surprise on his side and a ruthless opening attack, the tiger takes the first round. Round two, power. Both lions and tigers have an average running speed of 80 kilometers per hour. To put that in perspective, the fastest man on Earth, Usain Bolt, has a top speed of just under 50 kilometers per hour. They can both outrun you, but not each other. Lions have a bite force of about 4,500 kilopascals, but that's nothing compared to a tiger's bite force of 7,240 kilopascals. A tiger's bite force is so strong, it can crush a person's skull between its jaws. And a lion's paws can hit with a force of about 180 kilograms, which can easily kill a human in one hit. But if you think that'll hurt, a tiger's paw swipe is over 45,000 kilograms of force. In captivity, there are cases where a tiger killed a lion with just one hit. Using his outstanding strength, the tiger tries to break the lion's spinal cord or bite through his throat using his jaws. The lion's mane helps protect him against the attack, but is the overwhelming force of the tiger too much to take? Before we get to the last round, let's look at another possible scenario for our contenders. With the tiger and lion surging with tension, this fight could switch gears and get a little uh, steamy. In a first for versus, our contenders might mate. Yeah, if this were a female tiger and a male lion, it's possible they would mate and produce a liger. What's a liger? It's pretty much my favorite animal. Yeah, that's right, folks. Ligers are real, and they are huge. Ligers don't have the gene that inhibits growth, so they can grow to over 544 kilograms. That's nearly double the mom's size. But these males only have eyes for the fight, not each other. The final round is here. Round three, kill count. Lions kill about 250 people per year. Tigers attack nearly 2,000 of us annually. This higher attack rate could be because of the almost 5,000 tigers held captive in illegal zoos across the United States. That's a lot more than the 3,900 living wild in their natural habitats. And with that higher rap sheet, it looks like the tiger is taking this round and the match. However, lions are rarely alone, so if this lion had any form of backup, our tiger would be totally outmatched. But this versus match is a one-on-one -on -one fight to the finish, so our lion friend won't be able to count on his pride's support. We have a winner! It's the tiger! With his stealth, raw strength, and ability to stand on his own in a fight, the tiger proved today that he's the toughest big cat. Learn things as well as, as be involved. Excuse me, I'm giving a talk right now. Oh my god! Tonight on Versus, the saber-toothed tiger takes on the woolly mammoth. Who's bringing the most prehistoric pain to this match? There's only one way to find out. It's the saber-toothed tiger versus the woolly mammoth. Let's meet our competitors. In this corner, 
towering at four meters tall and weighing in at a whopping six metric tons, it's the enormous woolly mammoth. And while his tough guy trunk and tusks may be impressive, his resiliency is too. Mammoths evolved in Africa nearly seven million years ago. Then they spread to Southern Europe and eventually to Siberia and Canada. With thick insulating pelts and genetic mutations that changed oxygen delivery to the blood, keeping them warmer, the woolly mammoths stayed toasty during the Ice Age and beyond. That is, until humans and climate change wiped them out around 4,000 years ago. Luckily for us, this macho mammoth is ready to rumble. But he shouldn't celebrate just yet. Over in this corner, we have the most ferocious feline, the cat we fear most. You guessed it, she's the saber-toothed tiger. The saber-tooth is best known for her menacing 28-centimeter canine teeth. But she also had a muscular, stocky build, measuring two and a half meters long and weighing 300 kilograms. But saber-tooth tigers worked well in teams and took down weaker or younger mammoths up to 1,500 kilograms. A solo tiger may not be as lucky, but looks can be deceiving. The saber-tooth's bite force of 3,447 kilopascals is less than half the pressure of a modern tiger. As huge as their fangs were, the tiger's neck and jaws couldn't provide the necessary force to crush through bone or strangle their prey. Will this strong, single saber tooth have what it takes to face her full-size foe? It's time to settle the score. Who really ruled the Ice Age? The battle begins, but slowly, the saber-toothed tiger circles the mammoth, refusing to break eye contact. Without her usual pack for protection, She's cautious about making any sudden moves. Her opponent's fortress of a frame is intimidating, but he's passive. Woolly mammoths were herbivores that preferred to munch on plants, not cats. The carnivorous tiger's hunting instinct overpowers her doubts. She pounces. While this move is enough to knock most prey off balance, it doesn't affect the mammoth. The cat composes herself and lunges again, claws outstretched. She shreds at the mammoth's legs and struggles to reach his weak spots. But the mammoth shields his vulnerable throat and abdomen with his four-meter tusks, his footsteps thundering across the arena. The determined tiger leaps at the mammoth's back, attempting to wound her challenger and bring him to the ground, but the woolly mammoth's 10 centimeter layer of fat is impossible to pierce. And his long, dense hair gives her zero traction. The saber-toothed tiger slips, so the mammoth seizes his opportunity. He uses his greatest weapon, his trunk. With about 40,000 muscles and a lift capacity of 317 kilograms, the mammoth lifts the tiger and slams her to the ground. She's critically injured. One, two, three. Our winner is the woolly mammoth. Tonight, the heavyweight woolly mammoth conquered the saber-toothed tiger. Without other tigers for backup, she was no match for the massive elephant king. The tiger exhausted herself, leaping and tearing to no avail. Using his tusks and trunk, both defensively and offensively, the mammoth eventually delivered a final blow, easily lifting and dropping the tiger. The mammoth was so sure of himself that 
he may not have bothered to check the fallen tiger's vitals before departing. As a vegetarian, he was more interested in tracking down a salad. Oh, oh man. Whoa. Are you ready to go, ape? Uh, there goes the planet. Tonight, we're pitting the biggest and smartest apes on the planet against each other. Does the gorilla have what it takes to beat down the competition? Or will the orangutan smarts be enough to hand the gorilla the L? It's a battle of the apes with gorilla versus orangutan. Our first fighter hailing from the continent of Africa is the mighty Silverback Gorilla. Gorillas! This contender gets his name from the gray strip of hair seen on the backs of older male gorillas. He's even taken a leopard or two in his day. This gorilla is the oldest and wisest of his troop. And in this corner, coming all the way from the wilds of Asia, putting Dr. Zayas to shame, ah! it's the orangutan! The orangutan has quite the stage presence. He's covered with red hair and has extra long arms. The fatty tissues growing on the sides of his face are called flanges. Female orangutans use them to pick a mate. <laughs> but they're not just into him for his looks. He's smart, too. The orangutan uses tools and creates weapons beyond using his fists and feet. Sound familiar? Yeah. They're the closest relative to us humans in the ape world, sharing 97% of our DNA. These two don't look pleased to see each other. When this calm, cool, and collected gorilla crosses paths with the orangutan, Ape hits the fan. The gorilla gets aggressive, attempting to ward off the threat to his troop. The orangutan howls at the gorilla. It's so loud you'd be able to hear this threat a mile away. This is it, folks. Get ready for... Weighing in at 200 kilograms, the gorilla is more than double the orangutan's 90 kilograms. But don't discount the orangutan yet, as his arm span is 2.2 meters long. Yeah, that's 30% bigger than his height. The gorilla's arm span is 2.5 meters, so it's only 25% longer than his height. His lengthy arm span makes the orangutan a great climber, but utterly clumsy on the land, and he can only run up to five kilometers an hour. The gorilla uses his larger forearm muscles to catch up to the orangutan in no time. He's a high-speed knuckle walker with a crawling speed of a whopping 40 kilometers an hour. With his heavyweight status and unmatched speed, the gorilla takes round one. The orangutan may only have the intelligence of a human child, but he's got some crafty ingenuity to help him in this round of the fight. The orangutan surprises the gorilla by grabbing a branch and swatting his opponent. His grip strength is four times stronger than a human's, so that swat is more of a pounding. Unlike other apes, the orangutan can use his environment to create tools to help him survive. He's even made gloves out of leaves for picking fruit, like some sort of simian MacGyver. Round two goes to the orangutan. The gorilla is stronger than 20 humans combined, and though the swatting him with a stick may catch him off guard, it's not enough to take him down. The gorilla may not be smart enough to fashion a bludgeon weapon out of a stick, but he's smart enough to find his opponent's weaknesses. Using his low center of gravity and thick muscular forearms, the gorilla knocks over the orangutan. He's down! The orangutan clumsily grasps for any tree branch to help him up. The gorilla opens his mouth wide, showing off his five centimeter long fangs and bites down hard on the orangutan. The gorilla's jaws clasp with a bite force of nearly 9,000 kilopascals. The orangutan tries to bite back with his bite force of almost 7,000 kilopascals. But with the gorilla's unrelenting open palm punches, the orangutan can't get a lick in, let alone a bite. The orangutan is smart enough to tap out. He knows he's on the ropes, but he can't manage to climb up a tree to save his life. Looks like Braun beat out the brains in this fight. We have a winner, the champion of the battle and the strongest ape on the planet, the gorilla.
Tonight, two serpentine competitors slither into the ring to help us find out which snake is the scariest. Will the python use stealth to slide into first place? Or will the almighty anaconda squeeze out its competition? You won't want to slip away from this one. It's python versus anaconda. The sun is setting over our lush ring and there's no sign yet of our competitors. But that doesn't mean they're late to the party. Both snakes are patiently waiting in the wings. For now. Up first is the powerful python. This reptile is a member of the constrictor snake family and lives in Africa, Asia, and Australia. Pythons snake along at 1.6 kilometers per hour as they hunt at night. They like to ambush their unsuspecting prey and put the bite on it before constricting the animal and crushing its body. With its upper jaw boasting four rows of curved teeth and a lower jaw sporting two rows, this is one serious bite, folks. But will the python's sharp bite and tight squeeze be enough to take down our next fighter? Cranking up the pressure is the anaconda! These semi-aquatic snakes are some of the largest in the world, and they live exclusively in South America's Amazon rainforest. Thriving on the ground and in water, anacondas are speedy. These snakes can swim at up to 16 kilometers per hour and move along land at up to 8 kilometers per hour. These snakes are more stocky than slinky, using their brute strength and size to ensnare their prey. Both these contenders are masters of constriction, so this could be a close match. Maybe too close. Let's get to it. Round one, size. These snakes may be monsters, but the anaconda has the heavyweight advantage when it comes to size. Pythons weigh in at a considerable 91 kilograms, but anacondas can reach a whopping 250 kilograms. And though pythons have an average length of 10 meters, anacondas boast comparable stretch power, measuring up to about 9 meters. This one is close, but the heavy-hitting anaconda takes the early win in this round. Round two, senses. Both snakes have superhero senses and use a special feature that helps them smell odors better. Pythons and anacondas have a Jacobson's organ, a patch of sensory cells in the nasal passage that detects moisture-borne odors. These two tanglers can also detect heat by using their pit organs a membrane that senses the radiation from warm bodies in the vicinity. These snakes have their differences, though. Pythons hear low frequencies, while anacondas sense vibrations from the creatures around them. Eh, looks like this round is a tie, folks. Round three, predation power. The final face-off is all about predatory prowess, but Timing is everything. Tonight's outcome will come down to which snake strikes first. These sneaky snakes can camouflage in water and ambush unlucky prey. But the anaconda's comfort in water paired with its sky-facing eyes would likely lead to an initial attack. The heavier anaconda lunges, grabs, and constricts. It uses its superior squeezing strength of 620 kilopascals to put pressure on the python. Does the python stand a chance against the anaconda's crush? It looks like its 97 kilopascal crushing power is no match for its Amazon aggressor. The python can't take the pressure. The awesome anaconda wins! Tonight on 
versus the Megalodon is taking on the Mosasaurus in the ultimate battle to rule the ocean once and for all. Which hunter will take the crown? Will the Megalodon dominate using its size? Or will the agile Mosasaurus launch a surprise attack to victory? Get ready for a subaquatic smackdown. It's Megalodon versus Mosasaurus. One underwater arena. Two apex predators enter, one leaves. Both of these deep sea divas reign supreme in their time, but now the ocean isn't big enough for both of them. Before these titans duke it out for the crown, let's meet our fighters. In this corner, weighing in at 60 tons and nearly twice the size of a T-Rex, you know her, you love her, swimming into the ring at 17 meters a second, it's the Megalodon! Mean Meg's coming into this fight with the advantage. With a brutal bite force of 275,000 kilopascals, the Meg dominates the Mosasaurus in size, speed, and jumping power. In her time, she was the queen of the sea and an expert hunter. Utilizing a burst of speed, she's able to shock, stun, and disorient her target before going in for the finisher. But 23 million years is a long time to go unchallenged. The Meg isn't used to her food fighting back, so she may be in for quite the surprise in the ring. And who's torpedoing in at 13 meters a second to take the crown? Coming in from 100 million years ago, the original epic empress, the Mosasaurus! While the Mosasaurus is in a smaller weight class than the Megalodon, only weighing 20 tons, she makes up for it in maneuverability. Possessing smooth scales, paddle-like flippers, and a quick, strong tail, the Mosasaurus can propel through the water like a giant sea snake. Her slick, deadly fighting style means the Megalodon may have met her match. This is it, the Royal Rumble. The Meg attacks first, charging at the Mosasaurus. The nimble Mosasaurus dodges and begins to swim around the Meg, trying to disorient her. That's right, folks, the Megalodon starts chasing the Mosasaurus around the ring. Wait, what's this? The Meg has lost sight of the Mosasaurus. She seems to have forgotten that the Mosasaurus uses aquatic camouflage when it hunts. And not just that, she's forgotten an important rule when it comes to deep sea domination. The best offense is a good defense. The Mosasaurus comes in with a surprise attack. Using her two sets of teeth, one designed to rip and the other designed to grab hold, the Mosasaurus bites the Megalodon's tail. For the first time in 20 million years, she's not fighting for food, she's fighting for her life. The Mosasaurus detaches, trying to give the Meg the slip. Not ready to give up the throne, the Megalodon fights through the pain and chops down on the Mosasaurus. The Mosasaurus is down for the count. One, two, three. Proving that she's still the most fearsome ruler of the sea, the winner is the Megalodon. Tonight, the Mosasaurus lost to the Megalodon's superior size and bite force, but just barely. Using her defensive strategies, the Mosasaurus proved to the world that not even the top of the food chain is untouchable. The Megalodon learned a very valuable lesson tonight in the ring. Don't get cocky. Tonight on Versus, the Tyrannosaurus Rex 
is facing off against the Spinosaurus to see who's the top dino. Who has the biggest, baddest, bone-crushing bite force? Will the T-Rex come out on top with its high IQ? Or will the heavyweight Spinosaurus win the fight with its size? You won't want to miss this. It's T-Rex versus Spinosaurus. Tonight's lush tropical arena may look like a paradise, but it's anything but when the two largest carnivores of all time go head to head. These two are used to sitting pretty on their respective thrones at the top of the food chain, but only one of these fierce fossils can take the crown. Let's meet our colossal competitors. In this corner, it's everyone's favorite Cretaceous celebrity, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Standing six meters tall and weighing 14,000 kilograms, this dinosaur was a big deal in its day. With serrated teeth and a bite force twice as strong as a great white shark's, this predator could chomp through anything or anyone in its path. Ruling the forests and valleys of North America before the extinction event around 66 million years ago, T-Rex enjoyed his status as an unbeatable apex predator. But he shouldn't get comfortable just yet. In this corner, straight from the depths of the North African swamps, is the menacing Spinosaurus! At 16 meters long and weighing just over 20 tons, this fighter is considered the first semi-aquatic dinosaur and the largest carnivore ever. With a crocodile-like head measuring 1.6 meters long and 27 centimeter teeth, this not-so-gentle giant was a force to be reckoned with. The spines on his upper back are called a sail. It used these one-and-a-half-meter spines to ward off enemies and intimidate prey. Yeah, I'll say. This striking sail may also attract mates with its flexible joints and potentially bright colors. Ooh, irresistible. Roaming both murky waters and sandy shores 100 million years ago, the Spinosaurus had nothing to worry about when it came to competition. But there's only room for one alpha. Which competitor will snag the victory and the title of most daunting dino? These two aren't wasting any time. In seconds, these reptilian rivals are approaching each other. Footsteps thundering and claws extended. And while the Spinosaurus towers over the Tyrannosaurus, outweighing may not be as valuable as outwitting to secure a win. The Spinosaurus charges at the T-Rex, but the T-Rex easily dodges the attack, moving into the Spinosaurus' blind spot. Without the home field advantage, the Spinosaurus is like a fish out of water. But if he can get in a few blows, he may stand a chance. But where did the T-Rex go? The Spinosaurus whirls around to locate its opponent among the trees, but it's too little too late. Cunning and calculating, T-Rex tail whips and wounds his challenger, then lunges in for the throat. Despite the Spinosaurus's physical mass and strength, he doesn't stand a chance when it comes to the T-Rex's quick wit and mighty chomp. The Tyrannosaurus uses his maximum bite force of 5,805 kilograms and rips through his opponent's flesh. Razor-sharp teeth piercing straight to the bone. As the Spinosaurus struggles, the T-Rex steadies him, using only his jaws and laying on the pressure. One, two, three! Whoa, let 
living up to the title of the Tyrant Lizard King, our champion is the T-Rex! Tonight, we witnessed a match of mythic proportion as two vicious competitors duked it out to reveal the deadliest dino. Had the arena been near water, the Spinosaurus would likely have used his home turf to his advantage and ambushed the landlocked opponent from the swamp. But that would have only bought poor Spiny more time. The T-Rex had superior smarts and strength, and his senses were powerful too. T-Rex's surprisingly sharp vision and keen nose alerted him to his foe's whereabouts and led to his inevitable win. This time, the Tyrannosaurus Rex won, but that doesn't mean he's untouchable. for dominion over food, water, and shelter tonight in a Cretaceous cage match. Will the Ankylosaurus live to tell the tale? Or will the Triceratops use its horns to impale his way to victory? Get ready for a dino death match. It's the Ankylosaurus versus Triceratops. These two dinosaurs may choose leaves over meat, but make no mistake, they can be as vicious as predatory beasts. Each dino is equipped with defense mechanisms that can beat even a T-Rex into submission. What will happen when they turn their weapons on each other? First up is the pummeler from the prairies, the Ankylosaurus! Weighing in at two and a half tons, this behemoth is six meters long. Its three meter club-like tail, fully armored body, and low center of gravity make this Ankylosaurus an immovable, dangerous competitor. It was named Zul Cravastator, destroyer of shins after the Zul monster in the Ghostbusters film. There is no thing only soul. What a lovely singing voice you must have. But will its strong defense be enough to win this match? Opposing him tonight is the T-Rex killer, the Triceratops. Fossils from the Cretaceous period reveal that despite Triceratops being on the T-Rex's menu, the Triceratops' size made them formidable foes. Weighing in at 5.4 tons, the Triceratops is about 9 meters long and 3 meters tall. These vengeful vegetarians are ready to duke it out for the prime spot in the prairies. Round 1. Physical Characteristics The Triceratops' skull is the largest of all land animals at about one-third of its body length. It has three tough horns to attack with and a massive frill of bone at the back of its head. Trust me, folks, it's even more terrifying up close. The Triceratops strides over to the Ankylosaurus, tossing its head and looking intimidating. It circles the Ankylosaurus, looking for a weak point to thrust its horns into. Zuli holds its ground and waits. Its body is armored with osteoderms. They're made of two layers of bone and covered by keratin, the stuff of nails, scales, and horns. Armadillos and crocodiles have osteoderms too, and with so many on the Ankylosaurus's body, it's hard for the Triceratops to find a weak spot to hit. But what's this? The Triceratops spots a target, the Ankylosaurus's fleshy belly. It won't be easy to reach, and it'll require some quick thinking to pull off the attack. Round two, speed. Covered head to tail in osteoderms and with that low stature, it's no surprise that the Ankylosaurus isn't the fastest dinosaur. With a top speed of only nine kilometers per hour, 
All it can do is keep an eye on the Triceratops until it comes close enough. Then, the Triceratops could feel the wrath of the Ankylosaurus's heavyweight tail. But the Triceratops stands more upright, like a mammal, so it moves faster than its opponent at about 15 to 32 kilometers per hour. But is the bigger, faster dino getting overconfident? Using all the strength he can muster, the Ankylosaurus takes a risk and swings his mighty tail toward the Triceratops. A good thumb might be enough for the Triceratops to give up on laying claim to this spot. But what's this? Round three, offensive strategy. That massive tail has 100 degrees of motion and a whopping 14,360 newtons of force. If that move had made contact, the Triceratops could have been done for. The Triceratops is furious. If it can get in close and move fast, it might avoid its competitor's powerful tail and hook its horns into the smaller dinosaur's belly, piercing its organs. But the Ankylosaurus knows it needs to stay low and keep the Triceratops away from its soft spots. <sighs> Both dinos are getting tired, but who will win? Can the Ankylosaurus stay on guard a little longer? Or will the Triceratops keep trying to throw its weight around? It's moving again. Could it be? The Triceratops has given up. The victory goes to the heavily armored bruiser, the Ankylosaurus. Tentacles are out when two sub-aquatic superstars wrestle for victory. Will the octopus camouflage and poison its way to the top? Or will the squid's sharp sight secure the win? This might be more mollusk mayhem than you can handle. It's squid versus octopus. Our salty showdown takes place deep beneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean. Though the scene seems tranquil now, things are about to get wavy. It's time to meet tonight's contenders. Let's hear some applause for our cephalopods. You don't want a hug from this nautical nemesis. With nine brains, three heart, eight arms, the octopus is a real-life sea monster. These clever creatures have the largest brain-to-body ratio of any invertebrate, and they tend to be independent unless they're mating. Roaming the sandy ocean floor, the octopus can squeeze all 25 kilograms of its body mass into nearly any crevice. They can also camouflage themselves by changing their color and pattern using skin cells called chromatophores. An octopus moves via jet propulsion. It sucks in water, contracts its muscles, and forces the water out. This propels it forward. With a body composed of 90% muscle and an arm span of four meters, Octopuses grab and suction their prey, piercing their shell with its hard, sharp feet. To seal the deal, the octopus injects a paralyzing venom called tetrodotoxin. The most deadly octopus species is the golf ball-sized blue ringed octopus, who is capable of killing 20 humans with its poison. Ugh, remind me not to get on his bad side. Next up is the master of deep sea deception, the squid. This creepy creature has lurked in the ocean's deep water for 500 million years, reaching lengths of 13 meters long and weighing nearly a ton. Only sperm whales dare to hunt these spooky swimmers. To feed on shrimp and small fish, the squid uses its eight arms and pair of lengthy tentacles. Measuring 2.1 meters long, these tentacles are lined with rows of suction cups and sharp teeth to capture and immobilize its prey. Fighting in the dark isn't an issue for this hunter. Squids are bioluminescent, so they're able to produce light 
to lure in their dinner. They also have excellent vision, thanks to their enormous eyes, which measure 30 centimeters in diameter. And as if the water wasn't dark enough, a squid can shoot ink from glands in its body to confuse prey and distract attackers. Which oceanic opponent do you think will outsmart and out-ink its way to the crown? Well, drop your anchor and stick around. This is going to be interesting. And they're off. The octopus is tucked away in the sand and keeping one eye open for potential predators. After all, it's used to being picked on by its neighbors like moray eels and even fish. The squid glides over, hidden from the octopus. It scans its murky surroundings, easily detecting movement in the low light. The squid notices the sand shifting as the octopus readjusts its position. The squid is curious and drifts over for a closer look. It doesn't bother to disguise itself as it believes it can overpower the mystery creature. But the octopus also has sharp senses and fast reactions. It doesn't really want to fight, but this is a life or death situation. It turns to face its approaching enemy. The octopus releases a burst of black ink, buying time to conceal itself in the sand. Well, two can play at that game. The squid expels its own dark cloud of ink. The squid spies the repositioned octopus through the ink and harpoons its strongest tentacle from a shocking 10 meters away. The octopus recoils. One of its tentacles is now out of commission. Come on! Luckily, this fighter still has eight brains and seven arms remaining. And the lost limb could grow back in 100 days. But right now, if it can successfully inject its opponent with its deadly venom, the octopus could take the win. But the squid fakes out its foe by rapidly changing direction and gliding ahead at a steady 24 kilometers per hour. Now at close range, the squid goes in for the finish, using its beak to tear at the octopus's soft flesh. The octopus puts up a valiant fight, releasing more ink and struggling against its attacker. But it's not enough. The cloud of ink clears and reveals the champion. The winner is the squid. Had the octopus managed to pierce and poison its rival, the resulting paralysis would have been enough to turn the tables. Unfortunately, the squid didn't give its foe a chance. The squid swiftly stabbed the octopus, grabbed it head on, and tore its flesh apart. Now, the squid is the champion tonight, but how would it handle facing its only predator, the sperm whale? Well, we'll see who wins on another round of Versus.